Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew as we continue reading in the 25th chapter. This morning's reading is verses 14 through 30. So let us attend to God's word for us this morning. Jesus said, Again, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, open the eyes of our hearts. Open the ears of our spirits that what is spoken this morning might be from you and that what is heard might be filtered through you, that only what is of value might be kept. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning's parable is it's a pretty well-known one. Mostly it's referred to as the parable of the talents. In fact, that's where we get the word talent, when somebody has a talent because it's a gift. But here it's translated as bag of gold to help us recognize that this is, this is a big deal. That the master has entrusted great wealth to his servants. Not equally, but to each one he's given them a gift to use, to use well according to their ability. And when we've looked at this parable before, we've probably taken home the lesson that we're to use what God has given us and to use it well. We're not to hide what God has given us or, you know, things don't go well for us. The first two men, given five bags of gold and two bags of gold, they, they do that. They use their talent and they, they produce more with it. And the one with one bag of gold, well, he buries it deep. And he doesn't do anything with it. And when the master returns as Jesus will, well, he hears about it. I'm really uh, intrigued with this last person 
this last man who, who buries the gold, not so much in terms of what he did or how he did it, but why? Why does he not use what's been entrusted to him? And Jesus makes it real clear in the story. He says, the man replied to the master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. The man didn't use what was given to him because he was afraid of the master. He thought the master was harsh, cruel, trying to squeeze the last drop out of everything. And because of that, he doesn't trust the master to treat him well. And so he buries what has been given. This man looks at the master and sees somebody very different than the other two did. The man has no trust. And it's interesting, that word trust, as it, whenever it appears in the Bible, is the same as the word faith. Same as the word belief. This man had no faith in the master. And so he buries what was given to him. You wonder how come he looked at the master this way and, you know, sometimes we, we misconstrue somebody right from the beginning. I don't know how many of you have read the, uh, the book Pride and Prejudice or maybe seen the movie. The, the main character is a, a young woman named Elizabeth Bennett. She lives with a a family with her sisters and her mom and dad, and, um, you know, they're, they're not doing great, but they're getting along. They're, they're doing okay, and, but it's important for the, the girls to marry well in order for the family to do well. And when Elizabeth Bennett goes to a party, a ball at a neighbor's, there is a, a, a man there, Mr. Darcy, And Mr. Darcy sits at the side. He doesn't interact much. He seems very aloof and distant. And everyone knowing how wealthy he is, well, Elizabeth decides he must be a very proud man, selfish, self-centered. From that one interaction, she, she perceives him in a certain way. And for most of the book, she sees him in that same way because that's the preconception she has of him. And so when when he does things and she hears about him, she assumes bad motives. When she sees him at another dance and dances with him, the things he says and does just, just reinforce the way she was thinking about him. That often happens with us, doesn't it? We see somebody and we see in them something we don't like and and everything they do is filtered through that and we we just are are reinforced in our dislike, distrust of them. And the thing is that often what we're actually doing is we're looking in the mirror. I I have... heard it said, and I believe it to be true, that when you see something in somebody that really gets under your skin, really bothers you, it's because it's something in you that you don't like about yourself. You see somebody as selfish and grasping, well, maybe it's time to look in the mirror and see if that's you. We get these these visions of of other people, we filter our interactions, our relationship through that. And unless something happens to change that, we don't realize there's another way to look at them. In In the story with Pride and Prejudice, later in the story, we find out that that Mr. Darcy has helped Elizabeth's sister, Lydia, who has run off with a soldier with a gambling problem. And this uh, 
This man she has run off with, they're not married, it's a big scandal, it brings shame on her family. But she really can't get married because she doesn't have a significant dowry. And in steps, Mr. Darcy provides a dowry for her, pays off the debts of her, of her friend. He makes things right so that the family does not need to be ashamed anymore. And he keeps it quiet, even in the face of accusations by Elizabeth. But eventually she hears what he has done, and suddenly she sees him in a new light. And eventually, as you are probably aware, they fall in love, they get married. But until she knew his real character, she looked at him wrong. The problem with the the third man in the parable is he, he looks at the master wrong. And he needs his vision corrected, but it doesn't happen. The way he looks at the master with with distrust, with a lack of of faith, is the way many people look at God. They look at their circumstances and they think, God, you know, God doesn't care. God is distant. That that God's got it out for me. They may not use the word God. They may say the universe has it out for me. But they have this this sense that God doesn't care about them. That God maybe is even against them. And so they don't use the gifts that God has given them because they're afraid. But Jesus has shown us God's real character. Because of Jesus, we know that God is not distant, but he is right here with us. We know that God is not against us, but God is for us. We know that God is not harsh and unforgiving, unforgiving, but merciful and forgiving. And when we look at Jesus and see the face of God and begin to understand what God's character really is, it changes our relationship with him so that we want to use what he has given us to glorify him, to serve others, to show gratitude. We move from a position of of not trusting God, of, of lack of faith, to a position of knowing and trusting God, whose character we see in Jesus, and gaining that that faith, that willingness to go and live up to our potential because we're no longer afraid of how God might respond. Faith comes from knowing God's character. And we know God's character when we know Jesus. And it's worth noting that in in a time like this, it feels hard to to use the gifts that we've been given to use them well. I know that I'm struggling. As a pastor, I'm supposed to be out there visiting people, going to the hospital, interacting with folk, counseling, all those things that I can't do right now. And so it's, it's hard, it's discouraging. It makes me feel like, like I'm failing. And I'm sure all of you have, have similar feelings about things, not being able to be there with your your friends, your family, your children, your grandchildren. And so we may look at what we do now and think, well, it certainly doesn't measure up to, to the way I used to do things. And that reminds us of the importance of these first two men in the story. You see, the one man was given five talents and he brought five back to the master. Five additional talents back. The the other was given two and he brought two additional back to the master. 
I mean, the one brings five, and the other less than half that. But the master treats them both the same. To both of them, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. I'm going to give you many things to oversee because you've shown yourself faithful. You've shown yourself trusting. You've lived up to the potential that I have given you. God doesn't compare the one to the other. And neither should we. Some of us are given more gifts than others. What matters is how we use them, not what we start with. And that's true not only comparing from one to another, but comparing ourselves now in pre-pandemic. Back in 2019, where, where we did so much, so well. We don't need to feel discouraged that we're not doing what we did before. So long as we're using what God gives us to serve others and glorify Him. So in the midst of, of these challenging times we are living in, okay, let us not strive to live up to a potential we once could, but let us strive to live up to the potential of what God gives us here and now. Let us not crawl into a hole, okay, but let us keep our eyes on Jesus, go out and serve Him, Go and serve others with everything we have, right? every talent given to us, whether that is ability, whether that is connections, whether that is wealth. Let us lay it all at his feet, trusting that whatever we offer, he will respond with well done, good and faithful servant. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen.